thank you for the, uh, the introduction. Good afternoon. So I have nothing to disclose and none of my co-authors have any relevant disclosures. So delayed gastrointestinal recovery is a significant morbidity after colorectal surgery. Um, given the lack of consensus definition uh, for ileus, the incidence of ileus across studies varies significantly, but it is associated with an increased length of stay, a decreased short-term quality of life, as well as increased healthcare costs. Efforts are thus needed to um, identify modifiable risk factors for ileus and improve uh, perioperative outcomes. Until now, most of the efforts have uh, focused on the improvement of perioperative interventions to reduce ileus, but operative technique may play a very important role. In fact, uh, intracorporeal anastomosis may minimize bowel manipulation and uh, that way improve gastrointestinal recovery. Previous studies comparing extracorporeal and intracorporeal anastomosis have reported mixed results regarding gastrointestinal recovery, but those studies were limited by the lack of standardized perioperative care as well as heterogeneous definitions used to measure gastrointestinal recovery. The objective of our study was therefore to determine the effect of intracorporeal uh, anastomosis compared to extracorporeal anastomosis on gastrointestinal recovery after elective laparoscopic right hemicolectomy or ileocecal resection within an established ERAS program. To answer that question, we conducted a retrospective cohort study at a single high volume academic center between July 2014 and December 2018. Uh, like I said, this study was conducted within an established ERAS program. At our center, all patients undergoing uh, colorectal surgery follow that ERAS program. Uh, we do not routinely insert nasogastric tubes in the OR. Um, patients are started on fluids on postoperative day zero and are progressed to a regular diet on postoperative day one. We also use opioid sparing multimodal analgesia, and we only use PCA when uh, really it's necessary for patients. In this study, we included all adult patients who underwent an elective laparoscopic right hemicolectomy or leucecal resection. <clears throat> we also included redo cases. We excluded emergency surgeries and all procedures that required a conversion to open or a proximal diversion. The primary outcome of our study was time through GI3. So GI3 is a validated composite endpoint that's been previously used in several randomized control trials. Um, it is defined as tolerance of solid diet as well as passages of first gas or bowel movement. In our study, we defined ileus as GI3 criteria not met on postoperative day four. The secondary outcomes of our study were 30 day postoperative complications as well as length of stay. We divided patients into two groups, so intracorporeal and extracorporeal anastomosis. We compared the time to GI3 using a Kaplan-Meier analysis. We also performed multiple regression using a Cox proportional hazard uh, model to identify independent predictors of gastrointestinal recovery. We also performed a sensitivity analysis so using course and exact matching to account for unmeasured confounding between groups and to uh, determine if our results were affected. So a total of 346 patients were reviewed, of which 226 were included, 71 in the intracorporeal group and 155 in the extracorporeal group. <clears throat> As you can see in, in the flow chart, most of the patients were excluded for undergoing emergency surgeries and open surgeries. The patient characteristics were uh, similar between groups, so age, gender, ASA score, uh, BMI, surgical indication, as well as procedures, uh, did not differ between groups. Uh, we observed expected differences in uh, anastomotic configuration owing to the inherent differences between both techniques. The extraction, extraction site uh, was significantly different between groups, and with the vast majority of patients undergoing uh, intracorporeal anastomosis um, having a fan and still uh, extraction incision site compared to uh, mainly midline uh, extraction sites for extracorporeal anastomosis. Not surprisingly, the mean operative duration was also significantly longer in the intracorporeal group uh, with really a mean difference of about 20 minutes. <clears throat> when we looked at postoperative uh, outcomes, the median time to GI3 as well as the incidence of prolonged postoperative ileus and need for a nasogastric tube insertion did not differ between groups. 
The 30-day complications also uh, were similar between groups. However, we noted that patients in the intracorporeal group required a significantly lower dose of postoperative opioids, 60, uh, a mean of 60 milligrams of morphine equivalents compared to 142 in the extracorporeal group. Looking at our Kappa-Meyer curves, uh, we can see uh, on this graph that really the time to GI3 did not uh, significantly differ between both groups. On multivariate analysis, um, the intracorporeal anastomotic configuration was not independently uh, associated with uh, GI recovery, adjusting for possible confounders. However, the presence of severe complication as well as higher uh, morphine equivalents independently predicted delayed gastrointestinal recovery. When we performed our sensitivity analysis, we observed similar results. So in the match cohort, uh, we had 185 patients, 61 in the intracorporeal group and 124 in the extracorporeal group, and the results were, were similar. So in summary, um, in our study, uh, intracorporeal anastomosis was not associated with a faster gastrointestinal recovery. However, the patients in the intracorporeal group received a sig significantly lower uh, postoperative uh, opioid dose and this may provide indirect evidence to support the use of intracorporeal anastomotic configuration. However, we do believe that longer-term studies may be required to determine the potential benefits of intracorporeal anastomosis as well as to assess cost-effectiveness. And thank you. I'll be happy to take any questions. <clears throat>